The Espado were once the greatest threat to the Bleach universe. They were hyped as the inevitable doom of the Soul Society, and in many ways they had lived up to that threat by pushing the Soul Society to its absolute limits. Their leader, Sosuke Aizen, was an absolute monster. It was nothing short of a miracle that the Gotei 13 had survived in fact, because believe it or not, the Espada were a massive threat to the Bleach universe as a whole. They also served as an exciting expansion to the Bleach world by introducing Hollows who have crossed over into the realm of Shinigami and have gained Shinigami powers. It had taken the concept of Hollows and had transformed them from the fodder monster of the week villain into more complex beings with human traits like conviction and believing in ideologies, making them extremely interesting enemies. Characters like Zomari challenge the notion of a Shinigami having the moral right to kill a Hollow due to whatever established higher morality that they play by. Characters like Noitra reveal and also remind us that Hollows were once human and they can manifest the same degree of ugliness and unprovoked hatred that we can. Characters like Stark had reminded us of the absolute despair that comes from attaining a height of success that completely alienates us from the people that we love and it plunges us into the depths of loneliness. He literally embodies the saying, it's lonely at the top. And lastly, Ukiora's story is a beautiful tale of a monster finding his humanity and overcoming absolute nihilism. After having crafted such a fascinating group of characters, it had made perfect sense for some of them to survive and to continue to represent this new faction called Arankars within the universe. Kubo had wisely decided to keep several Espada alive, namely Haribel, Grimjow, and former Espada Neliel. And quite notably, Haribel was given the position of ruling over Huecomundo as its queen. But by keeping them alive also comes the challenge of finding a meaningful purpose for them to serve within the narrative. And for the most part, there wasn't much of a need for the Espada to reappear as major or support characters within the next arc, the Fulbring arc, as it's a very intimate and rather self-contained story that centers itself around Ichigo and the bonds that he has formed and his journey throughout the story. So it makes perfect sense that the Espada didn't return for this particular arc. But during the Thousand Year Blood War arc, where a massive war that had spanned across every realm within the Bleach universe was taking place, there was little to no reason as to why they shouldn't appear. And Kubo makes an indication of this quite early on. Since the start of the Quincy's attack, he didn't begin in the Soul Society, but rather within Huecomundo. It is revealed in the anime that during the siege of Huecomundo, Yuhobak had led his forces to Los Noches and had fought and defeated its queen Haribel, proceeding to then hold her prisoner for the entire length of the final arc. We are also shown that Neliel was ordered by Haribel to escape and to save herself along with her fraction, but we're left to wonder just where on earth Grimja was during this portion of the story. Thankfully, we get an answer to this much earlier than we realize. Despite Kubo's clear intention to do much more with the Espada, it ends up proving to be slightly disappointing in the end. And this is something that most fans would agree on, that the Espada should have had a significantly larger role during the Thousand Year Blood War arc. But why is it that this aspect of the story didn't meet our expectations? Well, I'm going to be answering this question by going through all of the actions that the Espada take during the Thousand Year Blood War arc, along with analyzing their narrative presence and what exactly I believe could have been done to have better involved the Espada into the Thousand Year Blood War arc. So join me as we discuss the wasted potential of the Espada during the Thousand Year Blood War arc. Starting with Harry Bell, after being imprisoned by Yuhobak, she doesn't reappear within the Bleach story until the Can't Fear Your Own World light novels, where it is revealed that she was in fact rescued and had resumed her role as the ruler of Huecomundo. Harry Bell was a character who needed more spotlight, even compared to Nell or Grimjow. During the Arunka arc, she didn't receive the same level of attention as the other Espada, and her only fight was cut short by Aizen's poor attention span. So despite her captivating design and intriguing character, there wasn't much substance to her story beyond being the kind-hearted Aranka. This aspect of a character should have been a more significant focus, as few Espada demonstrate the same level of humanity, kindness, and empathy as her. Harry Bell's powers were only briefly showcased, but they weren't enough to convince us that she had deserved the title of the third-ranking Espada. This dissatisfaction with her portrayal in the Aranka arc makes fans wonder how her role in the story could have been improved upon, since a complex character arc might 
might have significantly altered the original story. So a simple solution would have been to show her in action more. I think it would have been nice to see a glimpse of her being rescued from the Wandenreich headquarters or a brief scene of her fighting the Quincy in Hueco Mundo. I think this would have been enough to remind fans that Harry Bell can in fact put up a fight. By off-screening her defeat, it makes you question her ranking as one of the top three Espada, as well as if she is fit enough to even be the queen of Hueco Mundo. Now thankfully the anime has in fact made some additions to the first core of the Thousand Year Blood War arc. And the only reason that I recount what had happened to Harry Well before her capture is due to these added scenes within the anime, which had showcased her encounter with Yuho Buck that had led to Nell's escape from Hueco Mundo. And I think that these were fantastic additions made and I really do hope that the anime continues to enhance the manga in this way. In terms of Nell Yell, she appears early on in the Thousand Year Blood War arc and she was responsible for urging Ichigo to save Hueco Mundo. However, her role in the story quickly diminishes as she stays behind in Hueco Mundo with Chad Urahara and Orihime. I found her inclusion in this arc the least disappointing of the trio, as she serves a significant purpose at the beginning and she remains within Hueco Mundo when Ichigo leaves for the Soul Society. My issues begin with her role towards the end of the story arc. Neliel is reintroduced along with Grim Zhao in chapter 625, and she is now able to shift between her adult and child forms at her own will, thanks to Urahara's latest invention. By introducing this device, Kubo implicitly promised that Neliel's adult form will be showcased in action. However, I don't think that he delivered on this promise. And I think this is the case with several other story beats that were left unresolved, which may have been because of Kubo's declining health, which had led to him rushing the conclusion of the final arc. Now, despite her amazing new outfit, we don't get to see Nell Yell do much in it, as she appears outside Askin's Gift Ball Deluxe when Askin dies and he is about to detonate it with Yoroichi, Urahara, and Grim Zhao inside it. Nell Yell is revealed to have saved them from certain death, which is indeed an essential role that she plays. However, it is disappointing that we didn't get to see her powers utilized in this new suit. She could have been a valuable asset in battle, and I understand that Urahara had ordered her to stay behind so she could save them if necessary. And upon reflection, there wasn't much room for Nell to fight without detracting from the main action that was going on. It's hard to imagine her participating in the battles against Gerard, Lil Barrow, or even Askin. So despite my disappointment in not seeing her take part in a fight, it makes sense as to why she couldn't. Now, unless the anime makes some significant changes to this part of the story, I wouldn't get my hopes up too high on seeing more of Nell Yell during these final fights of the Thousand Year Blood War arc. The last Esparta that we'll discuss who has a role in the Thousand Year Blood War arc is one who needs no introduction. I'm of course referring to Grim Zhao Jagajak. Understandably, he's the most popular of the trio of returning Esparta, and it's understandable as to why he has the most screen time. He is hinted at being present early on in the story arc, and he is finally revealed within chapter 625. And this suggests that Kubo had big plans for him in the story, as his reveal was meant to serve as the payoff for concealing his presence until that moment. Some critics mistakenly refer to his role as a cameo, despite having more of an involved role in the story than a typical cameo would. Grim Zhao arrives to help Ichigo and the gang in their final battle against Yuho Buck and the Sternritter elite. Outside of his brief but yet comedic scuffle with Askin, he doesn't get much of a fight. His main role in the story involves following Urahara's guidance in order to find a way into Askin's gift ball deluxe, and this allows him to finish off Askin by brutally ripping out his heart. However, he ends up falling victim to the now out of control gift ball deluxe and he needs to be saved by Nell. Unfortunately, this rather disappointing performance by Grim Zhao doesn't live up to the hype that was created by his introduction and his multiple appearances in the story. The real issue lies within fan what-if scenarios that have arisen due to his lackluster showing here. There's a reoccurring idea that Ichigo should have fought Grim Zhao at some point during the Thousand Year Blood War arc, which doesn't make much sense to me. Not only would there be no reason for this fight to have taken place, but it would also exhaust both fighters, although Ichigo would likely defeat Grim Zhao easily at this point. If these two characters did in fact engage in battle, it would all result in a massive waste of time and energy, and all for the sake of fan service. And I honestly don't think Kubo is that type of writer who would cater to these superficial fan requests. Once again, unless a few things are altered, I wouldn't expect the anime to make any significant changes to this part of the story. So I think that Grim Zhao's role will stay the way that it is, even in the anime adaptation of the final arc. In conclusion, the underwhelming role of the Espada in the Thousand Year Blood War arc is quite understandable, as many of us had hoped that they would have done more. However, they seem to have been a limited room in the story to justify giving them their own fights and their own story beats.
sense, with Harry Bell's story being the only one that appears plausible enough for expansion. So while we can express disappointment in how the Espada were utilized in the final arc, we should also acknowledge that given how the story had unfolded, there was minimal opportunity for them to have played a significant role in the final battles. So as a result, it's essential that we look towards the anime adaptation of the Thousand Year Blood War arc with an open mind. We need to understand why the Espada have a limited role based upon the story that they are fitted into, and by doing so we can hopefully appreciate the narrative as a whole and enjoy the exciting journey of the final arc that unfolds before us. I do hope that the anime shows us a bit more of the Espada in a plausible way that doesn't ruin the flow of the story, but ultimately we've reached the point of the video where I want to hand over the discussion to all of you. What did you think about the role of Grim Jow, Nell and Harry Bell within the Thousand Year Blood War arc? Is there anything that you would have done differently? Would you have included them in a few more battles? Would you have given Harry Bell more screen time? Or are you satisfied with the limited role that they had played during the final arc? I look forward to reading all of your thoughts within the comments, so definitely continue the discussion. And lastly, thank you for making it to the end of this video, and I can't wait to see you in my next Bleach video. A massive thank you goes out to all of my amazing Patreon supporters for helping to make this video possible. If you also want to support the channel and see your name in the end of my videos, then check out my Patreon which has loads of perks like early video access and so much more. Thank you for sticking around till the end of the video and whatever you contribute will mean a lot to me.